I've had several breakdowns during the week just to, just trying to cope with the fact that I really can't bury her. We don't have a grave marker. We can't visit her. Her daughter cannot, you know, go see, go lay flowers at the grave site. Um, we don't even have a marker to go to, to let's say like if, it, if she was found on the road, we, we can't even do a marker like that. Um, I think that's the most difficult part, um, knowing that we can't go and physically, you know, see anything or put flowers there. After searching for her, we actually did a physical search. Um, we went to the police station, about 12 of us, and I have pictures if, you know, you want to see them. We all went there. We asked to speak to the, the chief of the police department um, in Cherry Hill, and they said, oh, you know, he's not here. You would have to go downtown. Um, well, I said, this is in downtown's jurisdiction. She went missing in Cherry Hill. So... We got a lot of pushback. They didn't care. I, I think we waited there for about two hours before someone even came out to actually speak to us. Um, and I asked, you know, can you guys help us conduct searches? No. No, we're not going to do anything like that. So that definitely played a big part on why she was not looked for. Um, I know I was calling every day um, to the police department asking, can you conduct a search? I think they searched like four months later when she disappeared. I think it was like four months later. Um, they did hand out, you know, flyers and things like that. But it only happened when I got the FBI involved. So that's when it became a, a case for the concern. Um, we were told over and over, um, oh, yeah, she, she ran away. Someone seen her on the bus. So they kind of like closed it at that point. And I'm like, no, she didn't run away. Why would she leave her daughter? You know, she had a baby. She planned and paid for her own baby shower. Why would she do that? And I asked the detective, does that make sense to you? So my proposal is called the IKEA Act, and um, it is similar to the Amber Alert, which would alert um, the authorities within 24 hours of the pregnant missing woman. Um, that alert would help save a lot of women. Um, who go missing because the number one cause of death for pregnant women is homicide. Wow. And the proposal, if gone into, if gone into act, it could potentially save a lot of women. Or, you know, if they aren't found, you know, before they're murdered, unfortunately, at least it would alert people to start looking um, because they're vulnerable. They're a vulnerable population, just like the elderly. There's an alert, a silver alert for the elderly. Um, there's an amber alert. There's quite a few alerts um, for the vulnerable population, and I think pregnant women should definitely be included in that alert. I've talked to and written to several um, politicians in Maryland, and some of them wouldn't even respond. Um, a few of them, I've sent them articles and the proposal, and they rejected it. I mean, it's, it's definitely very disheartening to know that we're not important enough, but we're only important enough when it's time for you to get reelected. That's when you want to hear from the communities. That's when you see them walking around, knocking on doors and um, asking for the vote. 
Um, I see emails too. Um, it's got to be a lot of money going into those re-elections or elections, period. It's, it's, it's sad that it comes down to a money-making situation. Um, but if the community is asking for, you know, one high concern for Baltimore City is safety. Safety on the streets. I'm asking for safety for a vulnerable population, which should not be a problem. Um, and it's just not being taken serious at all. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm definitely the wrong color, but I want, I'm not gonna stop until it actually goes into law, not just for Baltimore City, for the whole United States, not for just Maryland, for the whole country. Um, it's very important that this gets out because there is no alert for a pregnant woman. Um, so this would be the first one. And how many people could benefit from this alert? Right. How, how many people have been found? How many, how many children have been located from the Amber Alert? That license plate number goes out. It is seen everywhere. It is alerted to the phones. And then people have been recovered without, you know, um, being murdered because of those alerts. So um, I, I know with the silver alert, there are several people that I've seen unharmed, found, you know, and the elderly, that's a vulnerable population, they're found, they're located. Not saying that someone's trying to hurt them, but most of the time it's, someone that has dementia or someone that has an injury to maybe their brain and then they wander off. A lot of people have been located. Um, so that's all I'm asking for. Um, as a kid's aunt, as a, a person of color, this would help save hundreds to thousands of pregnant women who are being taken and murdered or murdered and left. Um, and it's sad because this is not the first case where um, a vulnerable person has went missing. Um, and Cherry Hill, a mother and a daughter went missing. And that was like a couple of months, I think before her. I don't hear about these people. I, I haven't heard, I heard one story about it, maybe one or two news. Um, places covered that story, but I never heard from that, heard about what happened to the mother and daughter. They were never found. And it's sad because it, it feels like African Americans were not important, not even just us, other brown people, people, um, of, color. people of color. And this is exactly why I want to fight for this. I honestly would hope that someone gets saved, someone is not murdered. Um, when that alert goes out, I, I pray that someone realizes it who's on their way to murder someone, their child's mom or something like that. And they realize, hey, I can't do this. It's all over the phone. It's everywhere. It's going off. Okay, I'm gonna leave you sitting somewhere. That's what I would hope, that it stops someone from being murdered. Or God forbid, if they're already murdered, that alert goes off, that person does not have a chance to hide a body or can't carry it across state lines or can't, you know, do something. They don't have time to do it. They don't have time to cover it up. And that's the point of the alert for it to make the whole country aware this, this child is missing or this vulnerable adult is missing. Have you seen them? This is the last known car. They might have been seen that they were taken or this is what they were last wearing. It makes everyone aware, even people who don't watch the news. It's gonna to come to your phone. You have no choice but to look at that alert because it's so loud, you're going to have to look at it to turn it off. So my goal as her representative is to save someone else. So they, their family won't be sitting where I'm sitting five or six years later, trying to get justice, waiting for that, never being able to 
come to complete closure. And and that's what I've been asked a lot. At least, you know, I was told, oh, well, it, I'm happy that your family got justice and closure. But did we? No, we didn't. We'll never have it. Justice of seeing him behind bars, yes. And that was not swift enough for me. You knew when you finally did do the research as the Baltimore City Police and the FBI, he had two kids, he lived his life, he was out there having fun. He went to two states, <laughs> he moved to two states. And when I would call and say, do you know where he is? They're like, yeah, Miss Wilson, we know where he is. We're, we're watching him. We're keeping a close eye on him. So why isn't he back here yet? And I get it because he hid her body. It became a no body case. And those are hard to prove because it's a lot of circumstantial evidence that has to be looked at. I get that. But in a sense, I don't get why it took so long. And it only took so long because she was not a Caucasian woman. And that's why. Her case could have been solved within a month. We could have probably recovered her body in that landfill. Now she's under 50, 60 feet of trash, which took years. So that is what I want to accomplish. I don't want anyone to be up in the middle of the night wondering looking on the bridges, like we actually looked on the bridge in the dirt. I walked through weeds that were higher than, taller than me. Um, it's truly been a nightmare. Getting the false text messages, people taunting, taunting us, sending horrible messages, calling 12, 12 a.m. We know where she is. Like, it is it's devastating. Um, and to know that she was the first one to actually get a, um, a $25,000 reward for missing African-American person without us having to go and raise a bunch of money ourselves, um, that's the only thing that I commend. And that was because of the FBI. So um, this has been a nightmare. Is still a nightmare. But has it gotten a little easier knowing that he won't do this again? Just a little. But he still is breathing. He's still with us. He still gets to eat while she's in the middle of a landfill, dead, alone. Nobody could be there for her. So I don't want anyone to ever have to go through that, ever. It is just, in my senses, I hope this alert, I'm going to say when it gets passed. I hope that this alert saves a lot of people. I hope that, you know, just knowing that I fought hard for her, she would be proud. Her mom would be proud. So that's why this alert is so important. It, it's not to, you know, um, get notoriety, just to save people. You never know. I, I would love to have known that this alert could save um, someone. And, and it's sad because you don't know who, who's going to be next. Right. It could be anyone. It could be anybody. Um, just to make the public aware is very important because we're, we're going through a lot um, in Maryland. There's a lot of murders, and we, we can't, you can't stop somebody from murdering somebody necessarily unless you have them in prison. Um, so this alert would at least get the person recognized that this is a vulnerable woman out here that's pregnant. She could be a higher risk pregnancy, um, like my niece was, which means every second counts. 
if there was an alert for her within 24 hours, she could have been recovered. Even though she was murdered, her body could have been traced to that landfill. She could have been right on top. Um, just never know. So um, I'm just trying to get it out there and hopefully... It gets passed very soon, and it's not another six years before somebody ignores me um, or another five murdered pregnant women. I want her to be remembered as a fun, loving, great mom who would do anything for anyone. Um, also, just to remember the things that, you know, she stood for. She also thought things wasn't fairly done with other cases. We would talk about it over the phone, like it's sad about what's going on in Baltimore City. She wanted to dance. She, she was into the arts. Like there's um, several videos on YouTube of her dancing. Um, she was definitely into the arts. Um, she wanted to go to a school in California. I forgot the name of it. But her mom, before her mom passed, her mom passed with breast cancer. Um, and her mom, I remember her telling her, wherever you want to go, just let, let us know and we'll make sure you get there for college. And she was like, I want to go to California. It was some school in California. And her mom was like, make it happen. You get the grades, get in, and we'll take care of the financial piece of it, her and her step, you know, mom, her mom and the stepdad. So um, she definitely loved to dance. She was very passionate about that. Um, she was in dance school ever since she was about five. Like, oh, wow. she would go to classes, um, ballerina dances, and then urban dances, and things like that. So she definitely was into arts.